Folks, I feel pretty confident Vegas is really, really looking down on the Auburn Tigers. Freezing temperatures are likely for several hours inland and a few hours closer to the coast. Yes. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby. Thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Little crossover actions. We are joined by Chris Gordy, host of Locked On SEC. And Chris Gordy, our friends at FanDuel, America's number one sports book. They have rolled out win totals for all college football teams, but we're going to look at the win totals they have for all of the teams in the SEC. And Gordy, I may be biased here. And you can that's why you're here. You can call me out. They have Auburn at six and a half wins in 2023. And I think that is an easy over your thought. My initial thought on Auburn is the floor should be six and six. Um, Mm -hmm. Even if things are horrendous and don't go great for Auburn this year, that you can't go worse than six and six. So um, yeah, my, my easy inclination there is when, when you look at, a, a your non-con includes New Mexico state, UMass Sanford, we know that's three wins right there. So can you find me four more wins? That's how I always like to do it. I don't like to work backwards with, I like to go forwards with win totals. So sure. find me four more wins at Cal, as we know, is one that I think most Auburn fans expect to win. Right. Um, I know Cal is, is a, is a decent program. It's a road trip. It's out West. It's a different time zone. All that stuff shouldn't matter. You're Auburn. You should be able to run, you know, even if you don't don't throw a pass, run the ball for 400 yards and get out with a get out with a win. So yeah, uh, I think that should be one. So that's that's four. Can you find me two SEC wins? Well, Mississippi State and Ole Miss at home. I think at, at minimum you need to split those, right? Mm-hmm. So I think you'll win one of those. And then really, um, outside of that, you know, is there a road game you can win at Vandy? Seems like the easiest one to to chalk up as a W. So to me, I, I think I'm with you. Um, you know, I think I think Auburn is probably seven and five is, is most likely. Yeah. Whereas eight and four, you know, I would put nine wins is really the ceiling for Auburn. I don't think they could get to ten, even if everything went great. But I think nine is the ceiling. I think seven is the easy. So I'm with you over on six and a half from our friends at FanDuel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I feel pretty good about Vandy on the road. It's those maybe games, right? Are the two Mississippi games at home? The fact they're both at home, I'm with you. I think you, I think you get one of those. I think at A and M is interesting because that program, like, I, I just don't know what. I just don't know. I just don't know about the Aggies. You know, how does Jimbo kind of get that squad going? They've certainly got the talent, hasn't resulted in consistent wins. So, you know, I, I think that's certainly one too. And then at Arkansas, Arkansas is a team I'm not very high on this year. We'll see what Coach Pittman can do, but it seems like they've kind of trended down a little bit over the last few seasons. AJ Jefferson, though, him back with Dan Enos, I think Enos is going to be a shot in the arm. Uh, Sure. Used to the Kendall Browse offense. They got some pieces, and the Rocket Sanders is back, too, one of the SEC leading rushers from last year. So if you're discounting Arkansas, I would say maybe take a pause there, but I would still say, like right now, if you're asking me unbiased, Auburn at Arkansas in in early November, it's a 50-50 game. Yeah, certainly a maybe game, but there's a lot of those. And I think if Auburn can split those, you're looking at seven and five, eight and four. So we will see what that looks like moving forward. You mentioned Arkansas. Arkansas is also at six and a half, courtesy of our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. And I think this is right. I think Auburn, I think Arkansas, I think Mississippi State, I think Missouri, all these teams are six and a half, South Carolina and Kentucky. They're all kind of in that same tier. I think that's fair. Gord, if you had to pick one of these teams that would go up or down as far as like win totals, which one would you kind of lean towards? Yeah, the Arkansas one is is interesting because they're non-conference. They get Western Carolina, Kent State, and Florida International. So that's three wins right there. Uh, BYU is their fourth uh, you know, non-conference. Now, remember, they went to BYU last year, and even with all the struggles they had, um, they beat a good BYU team there. So... Mm-hmm. I think getting them in Fayetteville this time around, I think they Arkansas should expect to win that one. They get, you know the neutral field game with with A and M is always close for some reason. A and M always finds a way to eke it out, but it's always sure. a close one. And then uh, Missouri at home, Mississippi State at home. Those are games that if I'm Arkansas, I should win those. So you know, road trip at Bama, road trip at Florida, tough. Um, you know, you do get all Auburn at home like we talked about. So I think uh, I think. It feels like Arkansas seven wins should should feel pretty safe. 
Yeah. All right. Then you look at a step above that with Texas A&M at seven and a half. <laughs> Once again, that's a team where I, I just don't know what to expect about this team. Yep. Gordy, I have no idea. Yeah, they just went five and seven and obviously, you know, rebounded at least a little bit and got the huge monster win over LSU at the end of the year. But they got to go to Miami this year. And I know Miami's not supposed to be, you know, great chicks or the favorite to win the ACC, but that was a dog fight last year in College Station as bad as both teams were. Mm-hmm. Go Miami is going to be tough. Right. Uh, and then, of course, you got to go to Tennessee going to be brutal you got to go to Ole Miss you got to go to LSU um yeah I, I don't know man I would I would pump the brakes a little bit on AM. I would say if th- if everything goes right for the Aggies this year seven and five is probably right where they are so I'd go the under on seven and a half on AM. I think I'm with you I think it's close but but I'm, I'm with you I'm absolutely with you uh Ole Miss in that same tier at seven and a half Gordy and once again this is a team where like you know, they're playing, you know, the, their best consistent seasons in the history of that program based on what Lane Kiffin has been able to do. But that's another one where I'm like, oh, this whole thing that he's doing in regards to rebuilding due to the transfer portal every time, like, I'm not positive that the talent is there for them to be listed at seven and a half. Like, is this, this a sure thing to be an eight and four team? What, what are your thoughts on that when you go to Alabama? I think at Auburn is a little interesting. You go to Georgia, like that's just not a good situation if you're if you're Ole Miss. That's the two biggies is this this time around for Ole Miss. They have to go to Bama, to Georgia. Don't discount week two at Tulane. Uh, Tulane is a team that just won the AAC, just beat USC in the Heisman Trophy winner Caleb Williams in the bowl game. Mm-hmm. Uh, granted, it was the Cotton Bowl, and they were I mean their fan base was fired up for that. But you sure. don't think they're going to be fired up for Ole Miss coming to New Orleans week two? Michael Pratt, by the way, their stud quarterback, is back. So that's a danger spot to me. If if I was doing Ole Miss, the safe bet to me is that they go under this year. That I think seven wins. And look, if Pete Golden can't get that defense going, they look terrible in the spring game. And I had people tell me, oh, they're running basic plays. All that. Make whatever excuses you want. They don't have the dogs. They don't have the horses on, on the defense right now. They're going to get there. They're recruiting well down the road but I think I would not be surprised if Lane bottoms out a little bit this year and they go six and six if all hell breaks loose but to me seven wins is not crazy to say for Ole Miss well and you know Ole Miss as far as like talent acquisition goes everybody's talking about how good their transfer portal class is but the two biggest names the two biggest parts of that transfer portal class like they're both gonna be backup quarterback so it doesn't really help your roster get better as far as translating that into more wins I'm just there's this weird thing going on between Ole Miss and Auburn right now. I'm going to be honest with you, but like, still, I, I, I just, I, I'm not buying it this year. I, I don't think Jackson Dart is him. I think Lane Kiffin is, is a solid, obviously, a very, very good offensive coach. But as far as talent acquisition goes, like, I don't love what Ole Miss has done in the schedule. I mean, I'm actually looking forward to them playing Georgia. Just, I, I think it's going to be a, an interesting matchup with Lane's offensive mind versus what Georgia does defensively. I think that's going to be a lot of fun, but. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I think seven and a half is, and it is could a be Spencer steep. Sanders, the, the quarterback from Oklahoma State, and he looked good in sure. the sports game and all that. Quinshawn Judkins, you know, the, the SEC leading rusher from a year ago, he's back as well. But it just feels like when I start to talk myself into all that, I start to take a step back and go, "Wait a minute, something seems fishy here. Something's not going to go right here." So that's uh, call me pessimistic on Ole Miss right now. Yeah. Before we talk about some of these top teams in the SEC, is there a team that you're looking at on this and you're like, this is way too low? When you look at our uh, the numbers, the win totals that our FanDuel friends have put up there, is, is there any team you're like, this this doesn't look right? It's the two at the bottom. Vandy at three and a half. Look, I understand it's Vanderbilt and expectations are not high, but they exceeded expectations a year ago. They and nearly, you know, barring a miracle against Tennessee, almost got to a bowl game. Sure. Um, they they beat Florida and they beat Kentucky last year. I look at Vandy's non-conference and I think like they should go at minimum three and one. And let's be real, going to Wake Forest, who just lost Sam Hartman, if Vandy can can do enough on offense, they could probably win that game, win at UNLV, beat Hawaii, beat Alabama AM. That gets you to the over three and a half before you even play an SEC game, Zach. And really at minimum, if you go three and one in non-con, you're looking for one SEC win. Can I get one SEC win? And I'm looking at uh, versus Missouri on on September 30th. That's the one, if I'm Vandy, that I can win. So I like the Vandy over, and I like the Florida over. 
Okay. Five and a half wins for Florida. Look, if you're telling me right now that Billy Napier in year two at Florida cannot win six games, then go ahead and fire him right now. He shouldn't be coaching in the SEC. Like, I understand year one was a transition. It didn't go great. They went six and six. The defense was god-awful. Anthony Richardson was good. But, look, you're going to take a step back offensively because you're going to go to Graham Mertz. He's not Anthony Richardson, but I think he can be okay. But I think that defense at Florida is going to be light years better. Austin Armstrong, I thought, was a huge hire. We saw in the spring game the defense started to look better. I think Florida, like, if Florida's number is really five and a half wins, dude, again, just go ahead and fire Billy Napier right now. If you think he can't at worst get to six and six, this is Florida, a program of excellence. Like, you win national titles at Florida. I understand it's going to take some time for Napier to get to where, you know, to that standard. But, dude, a bad year at Florida is seven and five, not five wins. Come on. Yeah, and you can only Florida people can only wave the whole you know the the Dan Mullen left this roster in shambles thing for for so long with the current state of college football with the portal. Like, okay, Coach Napier, like this is it. Like this is this is when you kind of need to to start putting it all together. Gordy, looking at Georgia, Alabama, LSU, and Tennessee, the cream of the crop in the SEC entering the twenty twenty three season. We'll look at those totals next, and also Gordy, I got to pick your brain. Where does Peyton Thorne stand among SEC quarterbacks when you look at the tier list ahead? Gordy, today's show brought to you by our friends at Built Bar. Gordy, I went to my local grocery store and all of the Built Bars were sold out because they, they, they just can't keep them on the shelves. People love Built Bars. And so I'm like, okay, let me try to find something else. I'm trying to lose some weight. I'm down 10 pounds. It's good stuff. And I'm looking at all of the other built or uh, the other protein bars. And they're just all like super high in protein or super high in calories. There's not protein. It's all carbs. Built Bar, like it's actually like good stuff. And it's hard to find it because nobody else is doing what they're doing. Have you had the puffs, Gordy? They're delicious. Oh, yeah. There's nothing better than this protein infused goodness. Um, when you when you look at the marshmallowy texture in between, but seriously, all of these built bars are covered 100% in delicious decadent chocolate, high in protein, low in calories, low in carbs. Be sure to check them out built.com or and your local Walmart or Sam's Club. Gordy, looking at the top teams in the SEC per our friends at FanDuel and per I guess common sense, you look at Georgia at 11 and a half wins. Alabama at 10 and a half wins, LSU and Tennessee both at nine and a half wins. I got a feeling a lot of people, Gordy, are going to say Bama's too high. And I don't know if I'm really ready to get there quite yet. Yeah, it's it's tough, man, because not having the quarterback is what is what's really, really hard to get a read on Alabama right now. I mean, it, it they've looked like they've kind of reloaded on defense. It looked like at least what we saw in the spring game, Kevin Steele's going to get back to that blitzing like crazy, you know, but corner blitzes, safety blitzes, linebackers, like they're going to get after it. And so I, I have, I'm confident that the defense is going to be okay. I think they're going to get back to the ground and pound dominant run game. I love what they've got in the backfield right now. The biggest question they have is who's going to be your quarterback. And unfortunately, the spring game, we saw a ton of interceptions uh, Ty Simpson, Jalen Milrow, we saw some good, but a lot of bad, and it was just a mixed bag. So they go out and get Tyler Buckner, the transfer from Notre Dame. I still don't think he's the answer. I mean, again, maybe they're just trying to add competition, but that's the hardest part for me, Zach. When I look at Alabama, you know you're getting punched in the mouth in week two with Texas and Quinn Ewers coming to town. Keep in mind, before Quinn Ewers got hurt in that Bama game last year, he was throwing it all over Bama. So yeah. the Texas game in week two scares the hell out of me if I'm Bama. And then road trips at AM. You lost the last time you went there. Uh, at Auburn again, Iron Bowl, you throw the records out. Even during Auburn's awfulness the last couple of years, that game has had moments. Auburn uh, with the first year of a, a coaching tenure uh, usually usually goes pretty well for them. Yeah. And uh, and then that Tennessee game is, you know, I know you get them in, in Tuscaloosa this year, but the, they're obviously good. LSU is going to be a danger spot. So yeah. I just look at it, at it, Zach, and I go, it would not surprise me. It's very unsaban like, but it would be. It would not shock me to say that Bama were to win or lose two games again this year, albeit close, right? I mean, last year they lose uh, on a last second field goal at Tennessee, and they lose on a two point conversion in overtime at LSU. You know, it's uh, but a loss is a loss, and so again, safe money. I think a lot of the betters are going to go. Oh, it's Saban. He had two losses. He always bounces back. That's true, but he's always had a, a dynamic stud quarterback, and he doesn't have that right now. 
Georgia at 11 and a half wins is probably the most confident I've ever been going over an 11 and a half win situation. It's stupid. I mean, their, their schedule I, and I <laughs> get what joke. it is. I get what it is. They had Oklahoma originally scheduled and they had to drop them because of, yeah. uh, you know, the SEC comes in and goes, Oh, you in Tennessee, get Oklahoma off your schedule. You're playing each other, which is weird. Cause they didn't do that with Bama and Texas. Like Bama's still going to play Texas <laughs> this year, but, um, you know, it, it's just kind of interesting, but you go look at that schedule. Georgia's going undefeated. I mean, I, I, I put a future Heisman bet on, uh, on Carson Beck, he was plus 3,000. If you can get that value on Carson Beck right now, because think of it this way, George is going to go undefeated. They go running back by committee, so no running back is going to stand out from the other. There's no receiver. I mean, maybe Brock Bowers, but like a tight end for Heisman seems like a long shot. To me, at the end of the day, I think they'll look back and go, he has the best, the cleanest stats. He's the best player on the best team. And I think Carson Beck's going to get that invite to uh, to New York. So, That's yeah, a juicy look. take. That is a juicy take, Gordy. George is going undefeated in regular season, 12 and 0. Uh, will they play Alabama or LSU in 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 Atlanta? We'll see. Uh, but yeah, I would say the 11 and a half, the over on Georgia seems pretty uh, pretty safe. All right, looking at the number two teams in in both divisions, you got LSU and Tennessee at nine and a half wins. I was talking with a buddy earlier this week, like. I feel really good about Tennessee. LSU to me is like, for some reason, I'm not confident about it. But there's no reason to think that they should be taking a step back from a year ago. Right. See, I'm I'm the opposite of you. I think I think it's te- LSU is more likely to go ten and two than Tennessee is, okay. and it's just because I just I like Joe Milton. He's not Hendon Hooker. I like their receivers, Brew McCoy, Ramel Keaton. I, I like these guys. They're not Jalen Hyatt and Cedric Tillman. So. I just feel like, and Tennessee's going to run the football. Don't 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 discount that. But like, uh, when you look at Tennessee, they got to go to Bama, they got to go to Kentucky, they get Georgia at home, they got to go to Florida, which is never easy. So sure, I just see there's more pitfalls to me for Tennessee. For LSU, look, they get Florida State week one, but man, LSU finally like they played that crap for a half. Finally woke up in the second half and then missed the extra point as time expires. If that game, if they make that go to overtime. I feel like LSU was going to win that game. Like they proved sure. that day. They it felt like they were the better team in Florida State. They just shot themselves in the foot a ton. I feel like LSU is going to go in that game way more focused this year. And here's the crazy thing, Zach. They were trying to figure everything out. It's so many tr- new transfer pieces through the portal, new quarterback and Jaden Daniels, new new head coach and Brian Kelly, new OC and Mike Denbrock. All these things they're trying to figure out. Guess what? All those guys are back. Continuity. Jaden Daniels is sitting there going, I know this offense. I ran it all last year. We won the SEC West. Mike Denbrock's, right. hey, Jaden, I know you can handle this. So uh, their, their leading receiver, Malik Neighbors, is back. They lose Kayshawn Booty, but Neighbors was their best receiver last year. Uh, the two big questions with LSU is who's going to be their starting running back and the cornerbacks. They brought in more transfer portal guys. How quickly do they get that figured out? But to me, I look at LSU, and if they can, inv- if they can beat Florida State in week one, uh, avoid a pitfall at Ole Miss, uh, I think they'll beat Auburn just because Auburn, outside of that one bow next year, never win in Baton Rouge. It's tough. I think, yeah. I think LSU is undefeated going into that Bama game on November 4th. And even if you lose it, okay, you still are going to hit the over on the nine and a half wins. That's true. That's certainly true. All right, Gordy, I want to get your thoughts. The newest SEC quarterback, Peyton Thorne, coming to Auburn by way of Michigan State. Where does he stand among the rest of the conference? That next, right here on Locked on Auburn and Locked on SEC. Gordy, of course, Auburn fans, they, they want Peyton Thorne to come in and be just, you know, an all SEC type guy. I'm not expecting that. But I do think with the current state of, you know, Hugh Freeze's scheme and what he's done to the roster as far as flipping, and I think as much as you possibly can in, in a six month period, I think all Auburn needs is a, an above average quarterback, and, and they're going to be over on, on the win total that we talked about earlier in the show. Yeah, it's it's tough, right? Because I can say I could say all this, Zach. I say Auburn is in a better spot roster wise right now than they were two two weeks ago. Sure. I, could say, I could say I love everything that Hugh Freeze has done this off season. I feel like he's instilled confidence. He did a great job with the with recruiting, with the transfer portal, all this. But I could still come back and say Auburn's not there yet, right? I mean, it's the 
to me, this season for Auburn is about building the foundation. You want to see pieces. You want to see, uh, you know, start to improve. You you want to see basically like, in my mind, like no blowout losses. Like if you mm-hmm. lose games, it's because, man, we were in that one until the end. We just ran out of gas or we missed a field goal late. We got to fix that. You know, things like that where you feel good about the direction of this program where it's headed. Sure. But that said, like, it's funny, Zach. I've been running through the quarterbacks, and, and this is the toughest part. Carson Beck, I think, is going to have a monster year, George. I know he's unproven, mm-hmm. but I just feel like all the weapons around him, he'll be among the top five quarterbacks in the SEC. Will Rogers at Mississippi State. Mike Leach is gone, but I still think they're going to throw it a good bit. Will Rogers been among the leaders the last couple of years of college football and passing. He's going to be up there. Sure. Jay Daniels at LSU, I think, isn't going to get worse. He's either going to mm-hmm. stay the same or get better. K.J. Jefferson, same thing in Arkansas, either going to get better or stay the same. Devin Leary is an intriguing one from NC State. He was Kentucky. a stud there. He's at Kentucky now. I got him ahead. So that's that's five guys right there that I think are clearly ahead of Peyton Thorne. Where do you come down with Spencer Rattler? Well, my opinion on Spencer Rattler was very different for the first half of last season than the second half. Second yeah. half, you look like a world beater. So I think I slide Spencer Rattler in ahead. Um, Jackson Dart, if he's the guy at Ole Miss, Again, a guy who looked like a stud the first six, seven weeks of the season, not so much in the backstretch of the season. Um, is he a cop to Peyton Thorne, or is he better than Peyton Thorne? I'd probably put him in the same kind of category. Yeah. Joe Milton, like limited sample size on Milton, but man, didn't he look good beating Clemson in the Orange Bowl? So that's where I would kind of, like at highest for Peyton Thorne, I would say maybe he's seventh or eighth in the SEC. Yeah, we're not we're not even taking into consideration whoever Alabama's guy is going to be. Good point. Connor Wegman at AM, Graham Mertz at Florida. So, dude, it's it's tough. I mean, you could say Auburn got an upgrade and Peyton Thorne is an upgrade. He has played mm-hmm. a lot of games. He's played in hostile environments of the Big Ten. But do we is he that quick a top seven quarterback in the SEC? I would say maybe no, not yet. Yeah, you uh you explained that really well. And now all of a sudden I'm like, that's yeah, I think that's interesting because until he does it, I don't know if there's an argument that you can make where that is the case. Uh, I, I guess if you looked at his 2021 numbers at Michigan State, you know he'd have one of the best, most decorated seasons that an Auburn quarterback has had from a stat standpoint. But that doesn't make him like a better SEC quarterback. You know, can he do that again? And you know, he he didn't do it a year ago for various reasons. So, and it also doesn't help him that like. There's a lot of questions about Auburn's wide receiver room. You know, I, I think the running game is going to be really solid. I think the offensive line is significantly better than it was six months ago when the season ended last year. But is that enough? And you, you know, you pair that with Hugh Freeze and Philip Montgomery's style of offense. Like I think it helps them. But you're right. I mean, all of those guys right now, you have a, a much stronger case to put ahead of them because with Peyton Thorne right now, I guess you're just kind of rolling the dice and projecting. Now I think you have to do some of that. I think that's partially our jobs to do that. But, yeah, it's hard to argue against anything you just said. I'll tell you this. I mean, I put him ahead of Brady Cook at Missouri and A.J. Swan at Vanderbilt, so he's better than those guys. Um, you know, what's going to be fascinating, Zach, what if what if Buckner wins the Alabama job? Mm-hmm. I think going into week one of this season, we can make the case that Auburn has a better starting quarterback on day one than Alabama does with Peyton throwing over Tyler Buckner. That's just my opinion. Now, we'll see as the season plays itself out. Is but- there anybody that could win the job? At Al- at Alabama, that you would say they're better than Peyton Thorne? I just like Simpson and Milrow, the, the flashes we've seen, the potential they have. And I love Mil- uh, Milrow's running ability. Uh, Jalen Milrow is, is, if he's the guy and he can cut down the turnovers, I think he could be really special for Alabama. But I think we're, we're picking hair. Ha- cho- what's the word? Choosing hairs, whatever it is. Like it's splitting hairs. Splitting hairs. It's, like there's so much unknown. We don't yeah. know. Like Graham Mertz was was good and bad at Wisconsin. He could get to Florida and be a stud. We don't know until we get in there. But uh again, I can only go with what with what I've seen. And again, I'm taking a huge game law Carson back. He hasn't started a game for Georgia, but I just look at those pieces and go, My God. But we know right now it's say Will Rogers, Jaden Daniels, KJ Jefferson, Devin Leary, maybe Radler and Dart, wherever you have them, I would sure. have them ahead of Thorne. Yeah, I think all that makes sense, Gordy. If uh, if folks want more SEC conference-wide coverage, where do they go, bud? Yeah, just come over to Locked on SEC. We're, uh, talk- we've been talking a lot of 
We've been talking very glowingly about Auburn in recent weeks, so uh, you probably would love our show these last couple of, uh, of weeks. But, uh, yeah, we'll be recapping it all uh, or getting ready for the uh, the season. We'll be talking more football. We'll have more guests stop by along the way. We had TJ Finley on a couple weeks ago, so check us out, Locked on SEC. Yeah, yeah, he kind of gave you a tip of the hat. He's like, yeah, I'm really thinking about transferring. And then, then of course, he entered the portal. So uh, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, for uh, Locked On SEC listeners, you can find my show, Locked On Auburn, available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. And we will see you on Monday. This has been Locked On Auburn and Locked On SEC.